Hello everyone, in this video I'll be talking about how to use markers instead of keyframes and we will learn how to control the animations using markers. The benefit of this method is that you won't need tedious and unnecessary copy and pasting and your timeline won't be so crowded. But before don't forget to subscribe and be sure to like so that YouTube can offer you similar videos from my channel or others. And if you have a keen interest in mastering motion graphics techniques and aspire to use them effectively in professional projects, I highly recommend watching these videos once you've completed this tutorial. I've put the links in the description. Ok, let's start. For a better understanding of this method, I first explain it with a simple example and then after that I go to a more complex and practical one. As you can see, I've already created this ball animation and now I want to control and repeat it using markers. Well, the first thing that you need to do is copy the intended expression that I put in the comment section, then add it to the properties that have keyframes. Then I alt click on the stopwatch of the properties that have keyframes, then paste it in the expression section. As you can see now there is no animation, that's because there is no marker on the layer so that the expression can play the animation according to the marker. Let me create a marker on the layer where I want my animation to play. I create a marker right here. Notice that you need to create a marker on the layer not on the work area. Let's check it out. As you can see the animation plays where the marker is placed. For example, I add some more markers. And let's give it a shot. As you can see, the moment the indicator reaches a marker, the animation is played. Now that we are familiar with controlling the animation with the markers, let's work on a more realistic and practical example where we learn how to use this technique on a serious project. But before, if you're just starting out with motion graphics and after effects, and feeling a bit unsure about how to become a pro motion designer, I really suggest giving my motion hero course a look. It could be just the thing you need. Ok, I've already made this animation and to not make the video even longer, I will only talk about how to create such a clinking animation and its bursting effect. Ok, now let's work on the clicking animation. I open the start comp and as you can see to have good control over the clicking animation with the markers I have created the main movements of the cursor using a null and then I parent the mouse layer to the null and now I want to create the clicking animation for the mouse layer. Ok let's see where we need the clicking animation. As you see this moment is when the color of this item changes and this is where we need to create the clicking animation. To do that I select the mouse layer and open the position, scale and rotation properties. And I create a keyframe for each one of them. 10 frames ahead, I want to create an anticipation for it. To do so I drag the cursor to the right a bit. And increase its scale a bit. I set it to 120. I rotate it to the right slightly so the head of the cursor towards on the right. For the next action which is the hidden one I move 5 frames forward. To make things easier I copy and paste the initial keyframes and I drag the cursor to the left a bit and decrease its scale and also rotate it to the left a bit. Let's check it out. I solid the layer so I can see it better. It's good so far. 5 frames ahead and so the cursor returns to where it was, I copy and paste the initial keyframes. 
Now let's see how it turned out. As you can see the cursor rotates to the back and gets ready to click and after click it goes back to its starting point. Well, it's good. To make the animation smoother, I make the keyframes easy x. And I move the first two keyframes of the rotation two frames forward to make an overlapping action. And also I move the third keyframes one frame ahead. Let's check it out. Looks pretty well to me. Now that the clicking animation is done, let's control and repeat it using markers. First, I need to move the keyframes to the start of the timeline. Then I add the expression to these properties. Three errors have popped up which you don't need to worry about because once the markers are added, these errors will be solved. I unsold the layer and then let's see where I need to place the markers. Well, right here when this item gets smaller and red, I have to add the markers so the clicking animation would play here. Let's check it out. As you can see the animation has a little bit of delay and that's because I made an anticipation for it. So I have to see how many frames it would take so the clicking animation happens. I know for a fact that the clicking happens on these keyframes. And from the start of the animation until the click takes about 15 frames. So I create the markers 15 frames before the clicking moment. Well, I wanted to click here. So I move 15 frames backward and move the markers here. Let's check it out. I think it would be better if I move the marker just a little bit back. I move it back by 2 frames. Let's see how it turned out. Very good. Let's continue and see where I need to create the next marker. Alright, here it has to click. So I go 17 frames backward and I add the marker right here. Let's check it out. It's perfect. Now let's preview the animation from the start. Looks great. You can keep going as I explained and add markers where they need to be. And the next step to make the clicking animation looks better, I add this burst effect to it. For that first I pick up the pen tool and enable the title action save and I create a line at the center of the screen. Then I make it solo so I can see it better. And I name it Burst. I open the layer and delete its fill. I open the stroke and I set the line cap to round cap so the corner of the stroke would be round. And then I add the repeater modifier. I open the repeater and I set its copy to 10. And then in the transform of the repeater, I zero the position. And also I change the rotation to 36 so the shape would look like this. Then I add the trim path modifier to it. And set both the start and end to zero. And then I create keyframes for them. Five frames ahead, I change them to 100. I make the last two keyframes easy ease. And I move the end keyframes two frames ahead. Let's see how it turned out. Looks good. To control this animation using the marker, I add the expression to the properties. Then I head over to where the cursor clicks and add the markers. Well, one frame before the cursor clicks and the item becomes red, I add the marker. I select the burst layer and I hit the star button on the numpad. 
Let's check it out. As you can see, there is a problem here, and that is the layer isn't where it should be. So to solve that, I go to where the clicking animation happens, and then I move the burst layer to that place. Let's check it out one more time. It looks good. Then I have to move the burst layer below the mouse layer. Let's see how it turned out. Perfect. The next thing to do is parenting the burst layer to the null object exactly where the click animation happens. So I wouldn't have to change the position of the burst layer everywhere the cursor clicks. Now let's create the second marker of the burst layer so you can better understand what I mean. I add the marker of the burst layer exactly where the clicking takes place. Let's give it another look. Looks perfect. You can continue like this and create this animation like mine. I hope you learned something from this video and if you want to learn more methods and techniques, check out this playlist. Thanks for watching.